All right. You know what three weeks from today is, Jim? It's very impactful potentially on your life. It's the Super Bowl. Pitchers and catchers reporting. Oh, that too. For the Padres is three weeks from today. It also happens to coincide with Super Bowl 58. John and Jim with you here. It is an off-season edition of the wrap-up show on a Sunday night. We are getting closer to spring training. Pitchers and catchers, March 20th is less than two months out when the Padres meet the Dodgers in Seoul, South Korea, and we'll be with you for the next hour. So as you make your way in, live or on replay, subscribe. We've got year on content for you. Smash the like button. You can follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. We appreciate your support of the channel with the Super Chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to every single Super Chat here today. You can click join down below if you want to become a member and get emojis and badges as well. So here we are three weeks out. We have a series of rumors that have been discussed over the last week or so, I would say, Jim, and we can get into those. But the quiet offseason, not just for the Padres, to be honest, a quiet offseason outside of the Dodgers continues, but it's been eerily quiet for the Padres now three weeks from pitchers and catchers reporting. Still two outfielders on the roster. <laughs> two Still, you know, no legitimate first baseman. Still no everyday DH and no, you know, bench depth. Like, it's the same old stuff. Um I just, I just have to think at some point it has to get going here. I mean, the, baseball, I don't know what the problem is, but we are, like you said, three weeks away from at least Padres pitchers and catchers reporting on Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there's like, how many top free agents are still left out there? Oh, there's a lot. Uh, so many. Yeah. I mean, that's a baseball thing. Like, who do you think is responsible? Like, who do you think I would put the blame on? Who do you think, who would you put the blame on for the reason why this is? Is it the owners? Scott Boris. Scott Boris? Yeah, I yeah. think, I think probably right now, agents probably are holding agents. Yeah, they're kind of holding the sport. Like, they've got the leverage over the sport a little bit. I mean, you could blame a number of different parties in this. I think agents have a big role in it. Um, and clearly not every team's been motivated to spend. I mean, there's been a couple of teams that have, that have spent. And I think you have a team like the Padres. They're just kind of waiting for people to be up against it. Like, you're going to get players up against it. It'll be February. And maybe they take 10% off or 20% off. And they can get some type of deal. But, I mean, it doesn't appear as if the Padres have any hurry to get some of this work done. I mean, they know they have a few weeks. Truthfully, they have a little longer than that. Um, not opening until, you know, two months from now. But... I mean, it doesn't feel as if they're in any hurry. That's for sure. Yeah, the the notion of like we're waiting for all the prices to go down. Who 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 says the prices are just going to automatically go down? You know, if you wait if you wait too long here, you might be SOL. Or you could try to make some moves now instead of trying to wait to the last moment when deals could be going down. Like one thing I do know is once you get into spring training, I mean, rarely do we see take away the um, lockout year when, you know, they made a bunch of trades in spring training, but it's because they had to because that was the only offseason time they had to make any moves. Rarely do you see big time trades in spring training closer to the season, right? I mean, uh, a couple yeah, yeah, major see, trades, yeah, that would be more of a rarity. Yeah, you'll see. Yeah, that, that's more of a rarity. I would say you'll see signings. You'll definitely see signings for sure. But like big time trades. I, mm -hmm. Rarely do you see that because when but are you expecting a big time trade? I mean, I think maybe some people are holding out hope for that, but I'm not expecting a big time trade and I'm not expecting a big time signing. I'm expecting a trade and I'm expecting a signing, but I'm not expecting anything that's going to blow us away. I think the high end would be like when we could start here, actually, what Mike Farron told us from MLB Network Radio. We had him on like a week ago and he said, I'm shocked that the Padres aren't in more on Jesus Lazardo of the Marlins, who's controllable. Padres have players that would fit the Marlins' needs. The Padres may have interest in moving Lazardo. They may even have interest potentially in moving someone like Luis Arise. That's a whole other conversation. But, you know, Lazardo to me would be like the high end of some type of trade that the Padres would be involved in. But I'm not expecting a significant signing of someone that's going to make like 10 or 15 or $20 million a year. And I don't, I'm not expecting them to sign or trade for like a frontline starting pitcher either between now and opening day. Why, why I say big time trade is because doesn't it feel like not only one do they need to make a trade, but they, they need to make a 
not a significant trade, but they need to make an impactful trade. Like I, they need to make a trade for somebody that is going to be a starter from day one. Well, like, there's that. That's Alec. Okay, there's another name. Okay, Mike Farron said, and we're talking Padres rumors. We're giving them to you. Mike Farron said, keep an eye on Jesus Lazardo. John Morosi on Thursday said, keep an eye on Alec Manoa because the Blue Jays just signed a starter and Manoa could be potentially on the trade block. And again, I wouldn't necessarily call it, uh, you know, something of great significance. I mean, if he recaptures the form of 2021 and 2022, yes. I don't think around baseball, it's going to get all the attention in the world. I think in San Diego, it would be a move that makes sense for the Padres because he's controllable. He doesn't make a lot of money. He's coming off a down year. I think you can get him for you know, prospect outside of your top six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even potentially. So there's another name that John Morosi mentioned just last Thursday, I think, or last Wednesday. And that's a guy that we've mentioned here on the wrap up show during the uh the Juan Soto trade. Yep. That if somehow when the dust settled, you could have get gotten like a front end starting pitcher and an Alec Manoa and then maybe a prospect, like you feel pretty good about it just because you got two starting pitchers. One could have been a guy that you put closer to the front of your rotation. Another guy you could be like, okay, he has frontline stuff. Look what he did two years ago. His first two years in the bigs, and we trust Ruben Niebla like more than anybody to fix pitchers and get them back to whatever they were or take them from where they are and elevate them to the next level. Um, So could you get a guy like Alec Manoa for a uh, couple prospects? Not highly rated prospects but you know i don't know it depends on what the blue jays think of alec manoa do they do they think that he can turn it around and if they do then they're gonna probably ask for a bunch and they're probably gonna say like actually you know we we believe in him to, to be back to the guy he was two years ago than the than what he was last year or do they think he's a lost cause and if they think it's a lost cause then you should be able to get him for not a lot unfortunately i don't think he comes cheap former first round pick four years of control Right. So, that's, 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 uh, that's yeah, the I don't there. think he would come cheap. I don't think he would come expensive. I think he'd come somewhere in between. Of cl clearly, you're not giving up one of your top like six prospects for Alec Manoa, but are you giving up two top 30 prospects for Alec Manoa? Yeah. I mean, there's no way that Toronto could spin that to their fan base. I mean, you probably might have to do better than that, to be honest, like one top 10 and another inside the top 15. I mean, again, he's 26. He makes a million dollars. He's controllable, I think, for the next four seasons. I think 24 through 27, he's controllable. He was awful last year, and there were all these issues with him. But in 2022, he was an all-star, and he was third in the American League Cy Young voting, and he started on opening day for the Blue Jays in 2023, and the wheels completely right. fell off. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he was moved. I just wonder what he's going to move for, I guess, is the is the big question. Well, right now, nothing's happening. Like, no moves, no nothing. I mean, you have top and free agents still on the board. I know Josh Hader. Um, we can talk about Josh Hader, too, here. The Josh Hader signed with the uh, Houston Astros last week. Five years, $95 million. But, like, you know, the, the, the thing was, all right, once Otani signs and Yamamoto, you're going to start seeing a lot of stuff come off the board. And it's been nothing. Like, besides, I mean... Obviously, the Juan Soto trade is a very significant trade in the offseason. But um, what other significant trades have been out there? Like blockbuster deals. Other than Soto via trade? Am I like missing one here? Well, I guess the, I guess your point is who are the I guess your point is after Hater, who else is out there that's like a big time free agent, right? Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, yes, Cody Snell, Bellinger. Montgomery, Bellinger. Um who else? Matt Chapman Joel. is still out there. Matt Chapman is out there. Our yeah, I mean, Tommy I think Fam in terms is still of, out there. Yeah, but in terms of like frontline, you know, highly sought after big contracts, there's probably only like four or five guys out there, right? We probably just named them. Fam's not part of that group, but no, no, I know. I'm just Snell I'm just, and uh, I'm talking about like a, a yeah. player that could be impactful to a team for sure. I think Tommy yes, Fam. Fam could be. An, oh yeah, there's a lot of impactful players. I would say in terms of those that are going to draw headlines, I think it's Bellinger, Snell, Montgomery. Chapman-ish, Chapman. and then tell us if we're missing someone. But no, I'm with you. I mean, there's probably another 25 free agents that are of significance that are out there, and then a whole you know slew of players that could be acquired via trade, potentially. What's interesting to me is we've spent so much time, obviously, it's the wrap-up show we talk about the Padres. We've spent so much time on the Padres, but you look around baseball, and there's probably 
18 teams that are in the Padres category of being yeah. very quiet this offseason. And there's a few that have been more active than others. And then there's the Dodgers. I mean, the Dodgers and then Everybody huge else. separation. Mm -hmm. A couple of other teams have made significant signings or trades. New York Yankees would be right there. And then I think there's another you know, huge separation. And there's probably 20 teams that have had very quiet offseasons. I mean, Kansas City's done things. That's the weird thing. It's like there are teams that have had some level of activity. Kansas City with Lugo and Waka come to mind. And the Padres just have not been that team. I mean, again, a couple of signings from overseas, which hopefully are impactful, but they just have not. I mean, they haven't spent anything, Jim. They really haven't. Spent anything. I mean, you can say the, the Soto deal, if you want to talk about it, like that it improved your team. But I would say that you you don't have an outfield and you got a th number three starter and two relievers and a backup catcher. And a prospect yeah. that you have no idea what's going to turn in, he's going to turn into. Mm -hmm. And you gave up your 900 OPS guy, MVP caliber player, and your center fielder. Whatever mm -hmm. you want to say about Trent Grisham, still, you give up your starting center fielder. So, um, have the moves made this team better this offseason? I mean, I could definitely easily argue that they haven't. I, I can argue that it's given them, obviously, the flexibility that they desired. Um, but looking at this roster going into this year, uh, the amount of holes you still have, like you, you it's, it's about when are you going to, when are you going to address these needs? And if you aren't going to address these needs, then who are the players that are going to be in those positions? Cause if it's just internally, like you got major problems, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. If it's just internal, I, I would agree with you completely. Um, I don't think it'll be solely internal, but I do think to some extent it probably will be internal and i don't know what that's gonna you know how the fan base is going to react to that because you're right i mean there's no way to argue the 2024 roster on paper is anything comparable to 2023 snell hater soto give me a break i mean i'm not saying you can't win we've said this before but i'm not saying that this roster is anywhere near the roster it was in 2023 because it's not even close as we sit here today all right let's get to this first super of the day again if you're here subscribe here on content for you um, appreciate the super chats. Click the dollar sign below the chat box. We get to every single super chat. We appreciate your support of the channel. Uh, Richard is a Dodger fan and supports the channel. He says, I'm still getting questions from my Dodger friends and why I support this channel. I enjoy talking baseball with another fan base, giving an outsider perspective without the personal attacks you get on social media. We appreciate that, Richard. We do. Um, Everyone is welcome here. Again, we've got a Padres slant. We talk Padres baseball 365 days a year, but we do appreciate your support and interest of the channel. I've got a couple of more names, Jim, that we've talked about, and it still, I think, would be in the rumor category because John Heyman, I think, tweeted this out maybe last week, this idea that the second-tier starting pitching market a team like the Padres will be in on. He said Red Sox, Padres, Nats, Orioles, Mariners. Mm -hmm. are most active in the second tier market, which includes Hunjin Ryu, James Paxton, and Michael Lorenzen. We've mentioned Lorenzen before, I think, on the wrap-up show, definitely, on John and Jim. So he, a series of names to keep an eye on. Lazardo in Miami, Alec Manoa in Toronto, Ryu, Paxton, Lorenzen as free agents. Again, these, these players, Jim, second tier, but still the going rate for second tier starting pitching is in that $14 million range per year, would be my guess. Maybe a little lower, maybe a little more. And we don't know if the Padres can operate in that space or not as of right now. I think either one of those three pitchers that you mentioned would be a help for this team. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause after Michael King, who, who is, I still have questions about, I think he can be, I think he has the potential and has shown some flashes where you get him with Ruben Niebla, you get him in a full-time starter role. He knows his role. He's not bouncing back and forth for the bullpen. He could, he could be, he, to me, in the rotation, feels like a huge key. Because if you get good years from Musgrove and Darvish, which is what you're banking on, like you have to have those guys pitch well. Michael King, you get a you get like a Michael Walker-esque year from Michael King this upcoming season. Uh, you feel pretty good about yourself. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> then you're like, okay, we got three guys from a rotation. We can figure out four and five but if michael king does not turn into a guy like michael walker was this past year for you for i think yeah, 14 wins and era and th threes like 150 innings like if you, that does not turn if that's not michael king this year or close to that then you got like 
real concerns. Yeah, who told us recently? Was it Dan Zimborski on John and Jim from Fangraphs? I was like, listen, I mean, he had nice numbers, but it's probably a stretch to pencil him in for 30 starts. Like, if he's not a starter, he'll probably be an effective reliever, but he wasn't willing to go as far as to say he'd be effective mid-rotation long-term starter. Now, you only have, have him under control for two years, so he, who even knows what long-term means right now for the Padres? But I think it was Dan Zimborski that basically said, yeah, I don't think you can just automatically pencil him into your rotation for 150 plus innings next year because he's never been that guy because maybe he's never had that opportunity he had a nice half year right that's basically what he's done he had a really nice 10 start stretch with the yankees in the back half of 2023 now he's got to do that for a full season yeah full season and be healthy and if he's not gonna give you 30 starts he needs to give you close to that and 25 solid starts without getting injured and then if this team can make a postseason appearance like have him be fresh and then that's good but That'd be amazing yeah but um he's the he feels like a big time key for this rotation because mm -hmm. i agree what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to bank on musgrove and darvish being musgrove and darvish from 2022. like that's if you that's don't also get those, a big that's also a big you know, leap of faith, yeah, I know, leap I know. Faith, but you're, you're asking a good amount just because of health. I mean, Musgrove had this shoulder capsule thing, which sounds concerning. And then Darvish has finished two of the last three years on the IL, which is just factual. Yeah. So you are hoping that Musgrove and Darvish are your reliables at the front of your rotation. Because if those two guys don't perform or if one of them gets injured or one of them, if Darvish has another bad year and Musgrove... In, then you're in big time trouble, big time trouble. There was Bleacher Report that wrote within the last week, and take it for what it's worth. I have no clue who it was that wrote this in terms of a credibility perspective. But he's like, listen, with the Padres moves they've made this offseason and where they are with payroll, which is basically in like the 150s from mm -hmm. 250s last year, it's like, don't put it past them to get in on Blake Snell. Potentially, or that they have the thirty million per year. If they wanted to allocate it, they could do it, which to me doesn't make any sense because you just move on Soto because you didn't have thirty million per year, and now all of a sudden you're going to allocate thirty million per year to Blake Snell. Again, it sounds good in theory to have him back. It it answers questions that you have about if, about his um, excuse me about your rotation, but I just do not see it. They've been so quiet in every other area. And they freed up so much money. I don't feel as if they're freeing up money for Blake Snell. It just doesn't seem like that's the the game plan that AJ Preller and Eric Kitsenda have put together. I hope I'm wrong. And I don't know if I even hope I'm wrong. I, I don't know if he's worth $150 million or if that's a good investment. And I just don't really see it happening. I'd be shocked. I'd be utterly shocked if that happened. Um, would I think it'd be a good deal? Not necessarily. But at the same time, it is the biggest upgrade you could have over anybody else out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not even close, right? Not even close. And you, and you have Snell who is a creature of habit mm -hmm. back where he just won a Cy Young with the pitching coach that helped him get to that next level. You know, I don't know how much Gary Sanchez played a role in that because Gary Sanchez was like his personal catcher for the rest of the season when he mm -hmm. was here. But I mean, Blake Snell at, you know, 150 million contract, like that's the biggest upgrade you could possibly have. The money issue is the money issue. And I'm sure that it would rear its ugly head if they happened to sign Blake Snell to a $150 million, you know, deal. But, uh, you know, th this team is, this team needs to win and they need to win this year. Um, there's a lot of like, we talked about it with 2023 when they signed uh, Manny and Xander. Worry about the money later go out and win a freaking World Series. And they failed miserably. And then the worry later part turned into they had to trade Juan Soto and no signings. So I get it and I understand it, but I mean, everyone wants to win here. Yeah, I don't see how they can wait. Like, Mark, your point is valid. Maybe they're waiting. Like, the, But you can't compare the Dodgers spending ability to the Padres' future spending, plus I don't think you can wait if you're AJ Preller. I don't think I don't think you're guaranteed anything beyond 2024. Maybe I'm off base. Maybe there's something I don't know about. Maybe Eric Kitsenda wants AJ Preller long term, but it's going to be hard to convince the fan base that Preller gets another year 
if you don't win in 2024. Plus, do we have any real indication that they're going to spend more in 2025, that the payroll is going to go up? Now, you might say, and I've seen people say, well, they're, they're resetting their CBT by going under it in 2024. Therefore, they can go over it in 2025. But that, to me, is more wishful thinking than anything else. I mean, we haven't even heard from Eric Senda in any capacity. And I'm expecting him to all of a sudden increase payroll in 2025 but not yeah. do it in 2024. I think we're just kind of making it up as we go along to believe that. We all know actions speak louder than words, and the actions of this team right now seem don't expect much as far as spending goes. Trades-wise, absolutely. Could definitely, the trades-wise is, def, is a uh, more realistic route and something that I would be shocked if they don't pull off another trade before the start of the season, right? I mean, yeah, they have I mean, to. Well, a trade. I mean, it could be it could be a nothing trade, right? Well, it would it would be a quote unquote nothing trade, but it would actually be a something trade because it would probably be for a, an outfielder or a starting pitcher or something of need. Correct. I mean, you'd like to think that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I'm just saying that I, I would expect them to pull off a trade. I just don't know the caliber of the trade that they would pull off. Yeah, in the. In, I don't think it'd be a blockbuster deal, but uh, like I saw this name floating around. Uh, I read MLB trade rumors today. A guy, Dalton Varsho from the Blue Jays, right? Outfielder, a guy that could um, be a starting outfielder, outfielder for this team uh, right away. And maybe that's a guy that is some that you can get and not have to trade a bunch of uh, prospects for. It's not like Juan Soto you're trading for. Um, a, a, a name that we haven't heard yeah. of is probably a name out there that's going to be traded here. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you start talking about the trade market, I mean, you're literally, you know, we're kind of grasping at straws. I mean, there's 29 other teams. I mean, they could go in any type of direction. I guess the question is this, and we've posed this question a lot. Would you prefer they trade away prospect capital to improve the 2024 roster or spend beyond their means? via free agency like what's a bit in stopgap measures like if you go out and sign right now james paxton for 14 million dollars a year as a stopgap is that a better alternative to trading for alec manoa and giving up one or two of your top 20 prospects i don't know the answer to that i really don't but i think that's the question they're probably toiling with like do we have the money to do it solely via free agency and do we have the prospect capital we want to give up i mean can you really give up prospect capital when clearly you need to build from within moving forward and maybe there's a player or two you can part ways with but there's got to be four six eight players in your system you're counting on at some point in the next 24 months to impact you at the major league level so that's that's the big question for me it's like they could clearly make trades they've got a i don't know if loaded farm systems the right word but they've got a good farm system right now they could clearly trade away pieces in their system but they've tried that before and it hasn't necessarily worked are they going to go down that path again right now well we talked with david J from mad friars on friday um, and all the big time names that we talked about, it it doesn't seem like they feel ready. Like the Jackson Merrills, obviously the Ethan Salas. We talked about DeVries. Um, he's not ready. <laughs> he's he just got signed. He's 17 year old. But it didn't feel. You know, we asking him. He's like, yeah, um, there's a lot of players that that are talked about that don't feel ready. Um. And, and, and that's not a bad thing. It's not. A, it's not bad that these guys potentially aren't ready. It would be a bad thing if they're not ready and they put them in these positions of, you know, before they're ready because they have needs and they can't go out and make the necessary moves because they're so handcuffed and they have to use from in, inside their system. Mm -hmm. And it ends up turning to, to be backfired on them because they're they're uh, once again potentially rushing guys through their system. Yeah, I mean, we, we all agree with that. I mean, listen, I'm not opposed to the idea of someone in spring training earning a job that is in the system. I don't know who I'd be referring to. I mean, clearly, someone like Jackson Merrill, you would think needs time. He's got very few plate appearances above single A. Same mm -hmm. thing with, I mean, obviously, Ethan Salas needs plenty of time. So I, I don't even know where we'd be turning. I, the Jacob Marcy name comes up. He's 22 years of age. He's not 20 or 21. So someone can earn a spot. Clearly, that happens on most major league teams. But to give an opportunity to multiple minor leaguers that aren't fully developed and put them into a spot where that you are asking them to contribute from day one is probably 
a spot you don't want to put them in. Let's get to the super here from Run It Back. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, guys. If you're here, please subscribe. You're on content for Padres fans. Appreciate your super chats as well. Just click the dollar sign below the chat box. He says his Padres low budget free agent wish list is Jock Peterson, Carlos like Santana. Name. No relation. I like that name. Daniel Vogelback. You like that swing. You like, I like that, that body. <laughs> Uh, and Clayton Kershaw, I don't see that. Mm. Not many center fielders in free agency that look tempting. Well, of course, they, they that's a whole other conversation, Tatis. I mean, you've got this brilliant defensive outfielder. In theory, you could put him anywhere you wanted, and you'd be fine. I think they'll continue to use him in right field, but there's always that conversation about Tatis as well. You could play him potentially in center field. I mean, you didn't have a really good center fielder the last couple of years, so you know, I don't think it takes much to replace Trent Grisham, if I'm being honest. But right. it'll be interesting to see what they do in center field. I know A.J. Preller said about a month ago that he thought Jacob Marcy would have a chance to compete for the starting center field job. That's what he said. I mean, he just flat out said that to the media four, five, six weeks ago, I think, maybe at the winter meeting. So we'll see if that's true or not. Yeah, a guy like Carlos Santana had a kind of a, – not kind of, but definitely he had a bounce-back year for for himself because looking at his numbers here from – He's got to be old, right? Yeah, he's 37. <laughs> Is he? Um, yeah. I mean, he had a 747 OPS last year yes, with a total solid. of 23, 23 home runs. Remember when he killed the Padres when he was in Milwaukee? Kind of. Um, but, you know, everywhere he's been since 2019, he has, a, has a, he's had an OPS under 700. Yeah, he's just older, I think. He's older. Yeah, because he, he used to – he's been everywhere, right? He came up with Cleveland. Oh, God, he's been everywhere. Yeah. Um, Jock Peterson is a guy that – did not have a good year last year. Yeah. Um, you know, he let's see here. What did he have? But he ain't signing on the on dirt cheap deal, is he? I mean, he had he a make seven, last year. 764 OPS. And what did he make? Uh I don't know. I'll tell you what he made. He made a lot, is the what I recall. Because yeah, he was an he all-star. Made, he made 20 year. million. Oof, so even at oh. ten, I mean, even at ten, what's he going? He's not taking less than ten, is he? He's in it for the money. <laughs> I, yeah. I would think. I wouldn't think it's a big discount deal if I'm Jack Peterson coming here again. He, I'm with you. He didn't earn twenty million. Clearly, he's not getting no. twenty, but you don't normally go from twenty to four. I mean, it's 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 definitely an intriguing name for sure, because he kind of fills some needs potentially yeah. on the cheap. Yeah, I agree. He, you need a left-handed bat, power guy. No, it's a good point. And, and also, he can easily fill that DH spot. I know Easy. he's played in the outfield, um, but you can do better in the outfield than Jock Peterson. Yes, I could. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and Clint Kershaw, no. No way. Daniel Vogelbach, it's like a fatter version of Luke Voigt. <laughs> Uh, we can look him up though, just to do it. Also, a guy that has got to be older at this point. Yeah, he's only thirty-one somehow, and last year had an OPS of seven forty-two, which is very mid. Very. But he mid. was in a pitcher's yard in New York with the Mets. What did he make last year? He made. He still isn't even a free agent. Well, according to Frank the Tank, he hated Daniel Vogelbach. So, yeah. Again, are you gonna if they sign Daniel Vogel back, what are you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Great. Uh, I don't know. It, it, he's gonna have a seven thirty. It wouldn't do it wouldn't do much for me. It wouldn't yeah, it wouldn't do anything for me, to be honest. Um, we'll get back to it in a moment. We do want to remind our viewers about our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz. We can't do this without your support. Our viewers here live on replay, and of course, we can't do it without our title sponsor. Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. Whatever your insurance needs are, if you are in Southern California, Mark Nimitz can help you out. You got to get in contact with him. He's a great insurance agent. You can take that from us. I've got a homeowner's life insurance and earthquake insurance policy through Mark. You can get much more than that from him. Here's his website on screen. You can click the link in the description down below to get to Mark's website. Whatever it is, auto, home, renters, life, he is a great insurance agent. Just by switching, you could save $750 or more. If you ever have a claim, he could literally save you thousands of dollars. It happened to us in 2022 when we had a flood in our place. He saved us thousands of dollars and 
dozens upon dozens of hours of time. He is a great insurance agent with great service. He is a lifelong Padres fan. He is a native San Diegan. He is a longtime viewer of this channel. In fact, when we started the channel, I think Mark was with us literally like week two once we mm -hmm. launched the channel back in September of 2021. So if you support our work and if you want to support a local San Diego business, someone doing business in our community, please get in contact with Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance by clicking the link down below. Yeah, all his information is at the bottom ticker down there. All his information down there. You can reach him at mnimitz at farmersagent.com. That's mnimitz at farmersagent.com. When you reach out to our buddy Mark, let him know that uh, John and Jim from the wrap up show sent you. You know, the $80 million question is Jake Cronenworth. I don't see it. It's like putting out a fishing line with no bait is, and trying to expect you're going to land a shark. You know, he's 30 years old now. He yeah, just turned absolutely. 30 and they I gave do. him an eight year deal that doesn't hasn't kicked in yet. I know he's under contract <laughs> through age 37. Deal. He's under contract seven through years. age 37. So yeah, he's no, I th is he 30 or 31 now? Is he only 30? He just turned 30 because I saw he's turned 30 today? About his Okay, birthday. he's 30. Um, yeah, I mean, you got that 80 million. I don't see how you move him. I, I just don't see it. And then there's Hassan Kim, who's been marketed like he's Michael Jackson, this offseason by the Padres. They've had this whole Seoul South Korea series. I don't think that alone is the reason why they wouldn't they did like move a that video like montage following him through yeah, Korea. I know. So, I mean, I don't think that alone is the reason why they wouldn't move him. But, I mean, are they really going to move Han Sung Kim, who's as marketable as like, you know, he's not Manny Machado, but he's very marketable. And, yes, he's coming off a career season. And, yes, he's heading into – you know, free agency at the end of next year, unless they extend them, would they consider moving Hassan Kim at this high point to address other needs? And how do you sell that? Soto and Kim gone in the same offseason? I mean, you don't. You you go you go closer <laughs> towards rebuild than anything, but <laughs> right. Yeah, and nothing's really changed on, on as far as Hassan Kim Kim is gone uh, this offseason. There's been mm -hmm. you know talk from Dennis that uh, he's been the the Padre that's been called on about the most makes sense because he has the most, you know, value, right? He's a mm -hmm. cheap guy that is probably going to put up all star type of seat as all star type of season, right? If he re replicates what he did last year or if he gets better, I mean, if he got better, I mean, we already said right now, looking at like over a hundred and between a hundred and 120, maybe more than that million dollar contract here. Actually, he puts up a better season than he did last year and is healthy for the entire year. Right. Yeah. I mean, then you're looking at a guy like, oof, I mean, Danzy Swanson numbers, like I want more than that. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's where it comes into play is you don't think you're going to re-sign him. Okay. But if you're going to trade him, like I said, you, you have to get major league ready talent for this upcoming year back for Hassan Kim. You trade Hassan Kim for a couple of prospects, you lost me <laughs> and you lost a lot of people as well. I completely agree. Completely agree. I mean, man, those prospects better be the next Ethan Salas. To, I mean, you better be getting the number one prospect in baseball, which of course it wouldn't be happening <laughs> wouldn't in that happen, yeah. no. conversation. I wouldn't think, although he's good, I do but he's think not that I, good. Yeah, exactly. With one year control, I, I don't see, I think you can address needs. I absolutely think you can address needs by trading Hassan Kim, but does that outweigh having him, in your lineup in 2024 and the asset that he is defensively and offensively for your club. And that was the conversation we had about Juan Soto. Like does whatever you're getting outweigh what you would have gotten with Soto in your lineup. And you have to ask yourself the same thing with Hassan Kim. Um, I guarantee they've weighed all this, Jim. I bet there's a big whiteboard, maybe even a Google document. Maybe. <laughs> um, where of course they're, they've had these conversations. Can we move Cronenworth? What about Kim? What can we do via free agency? How much actual money do we have? How do we stay under the CBT? How much lower do we have to stay to address things potentially in July if we want to make moves? Um, we're going to hear from Eric at Senda, Jim, maybe on Super Bowl Sunday, so he can just bury that. That, that would be buried. If that actually, can you imagine that? Can you imagine like three o'clock in the afternoon on Super Bowl Sunday? Hey, um, we're going to have our payroll here. I mean, I don't. When are we going to hear? If they literally report. On Super Bowl Sunday, wouldn't you typically hear from the owner? Maybe then would it be a day afterwards? No, you you would hear from him when once all position players report the full first full squad workout happens, which would be on the sixteenth, I think. Whenever it is, the next week. 
Yeah. Could you imagine, dude? Niners are in the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl Sunday. And they're like, oh, by the way, we're cutting our payroll even more. Emergency wrap up show. No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Emergency wrap up show during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Eric, well, if the Niners aren't in it, then I might true. do it anyway. Because they're going to be in it, man. They're six and a half point favorites. That's a foregone conclusion. They were favored against Green oh. Bay. And look what happened. They won. <laughs> and it was so easy. <laughs> Yeah, Never easy like a it was easy like a root canal. <laughs> Never in doubt. Um, we'll hear from Eric Senda hopefully. There's only one headshot of him online, and which maybe is a credit to him. I, honestly, I'm not trying to. It's just amazing to me that you could have someone at his profile, which is a chairperson of a major league baseball team that's been in equity with Peter Seidler for 30 years, and there's one headshot of him. Maybe that's to his credit because he's tried to stay off social media. But that's, that's almost crazy. impossible to be a millionaire oh million, no 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 yeah billionaire i don't know about billion of, but rich part of a billion dollar organization right near the head point person and <laughs> no one knows what you look like well, wouldn't I just, there be press conferences for this company or, it's it's very odd but watch maybe he's the greatest guy in the history of the world i mean maybe he's terrific maybe what he says is phenomenal i thought his quote that they put out from eight weeks ago is very well stated but that's it one paragraph since Peter Sadler's passing from someone representing ownership. That to me, from a PR perspective, is a huge miss. You got Padres fans wondering what is going on? What's the future of this organization look like? What's our spending gonna be? Like, like calm me, calm my nerves, Eric Atsenda, and nothing. So maybe that's, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting to it. We'll find out. It's gonna be the most interesting part. Of spring training by far. Oh, by far. By yeah. far is when you hear Eric Cassenda talk. Anybody that tells you any otherwise, sorry. Don't listen to him because it's 100% what Eric Cassenda, not only does he sound like, but yeah. what does he say? What if he's like, what if when he opens his mouth, he's like, hi, my name is Eric Cassenda. <laughs> like, what if he's got like the deepest voice in the history of the world? Or like, what if he's like a really high pitched soprano? Hi, just like, my name's Eric Cassenda. Or if he's just like a mumbler and he can't like speak. <laughs> what if he like doesn't know baseball? He's like, yeah, man, uh, yeah. that Manny. Like, we we want to score some more Machado. points. Machado, Manny Machado is a really good player. Um, when we traded John Soto, we thought we could, you know. I like congrats some... to Manny. He's uh him and his wife. Pregnant. Oh, it's great coming from you. That's awesome. I'm sure he appreciates that. Yeah, you're welcome, Manny. I'm Don't surprised you haven't anybody. criticized that on Twitter. I'm not gonna be one of those people. I'm, come on, I'm kidding. Hey, but Jim, I can't honestly, Jim. Like, how much money? Would you, like, not thinking about the team having a child during the season. Wow. Yeah, come on. I'm not. <laughs> but what old. happens when he starts one for eleven? Because he's not getting much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is honestly that is good news because um, you know it's funny because you think I'm like oh man he's he's been around for forever he, maybe he's not gonna have kids but he's not he's only 31 years of age he's not old but yeah you had a kid playing, when you were what 38 36 Jones is turning five in March so March of 2019 I would have been I was 38 Kristen was 36 okay. Yeah, I cannot so. wait for you to have kids, by the way. It's gonna be it's literally gonna make my life because you are going to like be miserable. <laughs> I Absolutely. really hope like you and Aaron are like doing we're good. That. Oh, we're good. <laughs> we gotta get married uh, first. We're we we're, we're yeah, I know, but you're about to get married. Then you guys gotta have children. They're gonna it's gonna be wonderful. Raising children in San Diego. What could come on, man? Yeah. Let me talk to Aaron. Aaron right wants ahead. kids. I've heard before Aaron wants kids. Of course she does. Yeah. I'm not saying I, I don't. I'm just saying. No, I, <laughs> you give it I'm time. Just saying, you yes, the, the, hard, the, the harsh reality of having a kid is going to hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, like when the kid is like screaming his face off and the Niners have like a third and seven from like the 19-yard line, like, like yes. the wild card round. Yes. Yeah. And Brock Purdy like, throws another incompletion over another dude's head. Right. Or like throws it right to a packer who drops it. <laughs> and I'm like screaming, but my kid's like also screaming. Right. Exactly. But your kid's Aaron's screaming yelling like at me. Pig. Your kid's screaming like Peppa Pig and you're screaming at like Brock Purdy. And the only way, the only way that, that my, my child will be happy is if we turn the main TV on to 
right bob the builder or something i wouldn't even worry if he's brock purdy in two years he's gonna be the quarterback like the tennessee titans he's gonna be in the usfl <laughs> or the usl or after, ufl or whatever after having, U- UFL. A, after having won a super bowl anyway back to the padres if we can a pick six super bowl <laughs> jim is freaking out um yeah yeah, no, it's cool for Manny Machado. Seriously, I mean that yeah. that is that is really good news, and hopefully, hopefully he's healthy. I mean, we had read from Dennis Lynn the Padres expect he could be healthy in the second half of March. We'll believe it when we see it, right? What does healthy mean? Does that mean he's playing the field or not? And that's another reason not to trade Hassan Cam, as we've talked about for weeks and weeks. Yeah, because who else is playing third base? If you trade Cam and you don't have Machado in the field, now you're getting all wonky. Right now, all of a sudden, you're putting Jackson Merrill in your middle infield, and who knows what you're doing at that point? Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, at that point, you're like, all right, who are we putting in here? Like, Eggy Rosario now going to be like our everyday third baseman? Like, what's happening? Yeah, I mean, which is, I mean, not every day, but yeah, they got a lot of questions. I mean, we counted the 40 man roster the other day i think it was at 34 maybe it was at 35 and they literally have two outfielders on their 40 man roster right now and i mean that's not going to (laughs) pass once they get into into camp and there's other teams have like seven outfielders on their 40 man roster and they don't so i I, there's got to be a master plan i mean i don't think adrian pillars is asleep at the wheel i mean that's the last person you would ever think to be asleep at the wheel i don't know what the master plan is or if they can execute the master plan but there's got to be a plan. Like you tweeted out a week ago and got vilified for saying it. I asked like, a question. Everyone's like, Jim, you fucking hater. Like they need this and they need that and they need this and they need that. And you're right. They do. I, it's plain and simple. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, I mean, it's been eerily quiet. It almost feels like there's a lockout in baseball, but there's not. It does. It does. You're so right. Like from every team, like, you haven't heard anything from the Padres. Nothing. Besides a couple of press conferences for Wusuk Go and uh Should I ban Matthew. Patriots? Should I ban Patriots four here or just keep them? I don't really care. He's been annoying in the chat, but I don't know if it's like ban worthy. I literally could care less. But he's like quasi annoying. What, what do you guys want? think? Ban him or not? Put it in the chat and I'll make a decision based on the first 10 people. Yes or no? Ban Patriots for or first one person. <laughs> yeah, like I want to ban them or not. Okay, CSRF says ban Hammer. Who's Hammer? Huh? Is there a Hammer in here? No. Okay. Ban, okay. ban, no ban yet. Ban. Oh, you're banned. Sorry. <laughs> this is it's like an ele- It's a democracy. Peace. Thanks, bud. Yes. Six people. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. He was super annoying. Did you see any of it? He was super annoying. I think he was just like a hater. Yeah, probably. So we banned him. All right, let's get back to this in a moment. I do want to remind our viewers about our partner here on the wrap-up show, Aura. Um, I'm reminding everyone but Patriots 4 because he's no longer here. But I um, do want to thank uh, Aura for their longtime support of this channel and their co-founder, Will, who's a San Diegan and a huge Padres fan as well. If you are looking to get healthier – in 2024, it should start with our friends over at Aura. You can get 10% off your first order. They have all plant-based nutritional products, every single one of them. This is a great way to get healthier. I've been taking their probiotic for two years. It's an amazing product. I've been taking it for two years. I no longer have acid reflux symptoms, thanks to Aura. It's good for digestion, heart health, mental health. It's an amazing product. If you're looking to take a probiotic, if you're not taking a probiotic, find it at Aura. They have pre-workout supplements. They have proteins for after workouts. They have omega-3 oils. If you take fish oils, take their omega-3 oils. They have sleep pills, immunity pills, and much, much more. So if you're looking to get healthier, check them out at ORA.organic or click the link in the description down below. Great, great company. Um, again, co-founded by San Diego and offices right here in Liberty Station. Get healthier in 2024 with our friends at Aura. Yeah, it's still January, which means if you had plans to live a healthy lifestyle this year and you had some New Year's resolutions and you're kind of still maybe slacking, but you want to start picking it up and you're still looking for places to get um, t- supplements and be healthier, Aura is the place to go, www.ora.organic. They have everything you need to live a healthy lifestyle. Everything you need for post-workouts, pre-workouts, everyday vitamins. Go there right now, www.ora.organic. 
All right. Thank you, Aura. Yes, maybe it's kombucha plus me that leads to the ban. We've banned a good amount of people over the years, haven't we, Jim? Sure. Because the, I mean, there's there's some there have been a lot of troll. I mean, you get the Dodger trolls. We're fine to have Dodger fans, but when you start getting the trolls and the this and the that, it just is annoying. I'm not trying to yeah. annoy people that are Padres fans that are here for a good time. Oh, tonight's a good time. Oh, tonight is a really good time. It is a really good time. It's a good time. Um, what else is going on in the Padres world? Like, name one other thing. We still don't even like, know. I'm if a, okay. We still don't know if there's an official fan fest yet. I don't see it at this point. Right? Cool. Do you? Good job, everybody. <laughs> I mean, they're they're at spring training like a day. So. I mean, yeah, they're going to announce like a week out. I mean, it's either next weekend. It's like next weekend or it's not happening, right? That's lame. I mean, look, I'm not saying that. two weeks? I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be an official fan fest or not, but you oh, had. Does that have to do with the construction? Maybe. That's but what you can have, use. But you can do parts of Petco Park without. I, Dude, they look, had 400 million people there last year. Yeah, and then to go from that to literally nothing the next year but maybe they'll they would say it's because of the construction because last year the the players were out there well then then modify your fan fest to just like season ticket holders or something that's a good idea you know or or have it be a capped event and you have to pay or something along those lines even though it's yeah, not that's really a good, no, that's a good idea. To work but if you're yeah, not charging thousand dollars i like that yeah i mean if you're not doing it yeah pay for a contract if you're not um <laughs> if you're not doing a fan fest this year that sucks. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Hmm. Wait, let me read this real quick. Rich, okay, Jim's right. He, the Padres yeah. sold out 60 games last year. They currently have a 39% payroll cut. This franchise isn't doing great right now. I mean, yeah, they've gone from 250 to 150, basically. Now, they're not done yet, so I'm not willing to kill them on going from 250 to 150, but... That's kind of what, how they've, and again, you can parse through it and dead money and right. CBT threshold. So it may not be fully accurate, but yeah, it feels like they've taken a big cut off the top and like they're, they're not necessarily, the yeah. And I mean, they're trimming maybe more than the fat, to be honest. They just trimmed a good chunk of the fat this off season without replacing it with anything. How excited are you for the promo schedule? It's like all you want to talk about when it comes out. Man, they, look, they've been elite when it comes to promo schedules <laughs> the last couple of years. I mean, a couple of them are behind me. Got the yep. Hassan Kim bobblehead with when his, his helmet falls off because it always falls off. Are they going to do Hassan Kim blue jays? Are they going to do a blue jays? The, the, the Don and Mud. Shout out to Rich McGuire for hooking it up here. Don and Mud bobblehead. Wow. So, now, was really that an good... actual giveaway to Don and Mud, or did you have to buy a special ticket for that? It was like for a special ticket. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, because it like talks. Would you like to see a Michael King bobblehead this year? Okay. Kyle Higashioka. <laughs> Some of these. I can't hear it. Can you? Can anyone hear that? I hear like alien noises. Anyway, good bobblehead. Definitely. Yeah. That. Good one. It's really nice. Who's who's your who do you speculate for a bobblehead this year that we haven't seen before? Oh, how about a um, how about a go and uh Matsui bobblehead? Nah, they'll do they'll do a Zan, maybe a Xander one. Well, you know what's weird here? People are getting it might have been the way I set it up. I, people are getting ads midstream. Yeah, it's how YouTube works. Well, no, so that's just the new normal. Did but you if you're getting ads one? midstream, then you're missing content, right? No. How? If you can add, then you wouldn't be with us. Did when, you? How did you set it up? The way it always says, what YouTube recommends. Look, at, you go to 
You know what I'm talking about. It says ads recommended. It's a YouTube thing, dude. It happens to me. It happens. I see it, dude. It happens all the time. Okay. Jim says it happens all the time, guys. YouTube's got to pay the bills. It's a minute? What is it? That's John's fault. It might have been my fault. It may be my fault. JD Gasher says a YouTube thing. I'll, I'll look at that. I'll look at that. We just lost like all of our subscribers. <laughs> Why? Because oh, of you, ads. Oh, you, big, you big time and mother effers. I, like we have something to do with it. Look at us. It's just the ad. It's the it's what YouTube chooses. I'm not sitting here saying time for an ad. Like it just does it. And yes, it's probably my fault. It's I'm trying to think if in the live stream. I'll look at that. I'm going to have to do some research on that. I'm going to have to do some research. Oh, I know. I, you're Like uh, Kwan says in the chat, you're probably going to get a gold glove Tatis bobblehead. I love that. I love that. Gold, yeah. And a gold glove Hassan Kim bobblehead. Are we going to get a, a tri bobblehead Soto Yankee hater Houston Snell wherever he lands? Well, they lost out on that opportunity to sell a Hassan or a Dude, you know what'd be you know be um would be weird. I don't is know. To have a Blake Snell Cy Young bobblehead and have it be on the giveaway day <sighs> Man. that he returns with whatever team. Man, on. that's an interesting point. Would you would you be in favor of that? I'd be in favor of that. I think I would be in yeah. favor of that. I mean, that's a little hokey, but it's a little hokey. It's a kind of a weird thing, but I mean, the guy just won the Cy Young for you. And not I know. I mean, uh, I to mean, not yeah. recognize it. It's a good point. Yeah, Jake PB, Randy Jones, and Blake Snell. Am I missing one? I don't think so. Is Jim missing one? Kevin Brown should have won the side in '98. Just saying. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you're the giveaway guy, so you you tell me what what's appropriate. Um, or what you'd want to see. I mean, yeah, it's fine, I guess. But I think there's going to be two bobbleheads of him and Kim and Tatis with their gold gloves. Oh, I like that. There might be something for Blake Snell. There might be something for Xander. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Like Xander's wrist is like dangling. See, opening day is going to be interesting because of how they honor Peter. You know, I mean, you always think Me about too. opening day as this celebration, which it is. Not, it still is. Make no mistake. But I mean, the fact that you're honoring your former owner that had so much goodwill in the community, I think also plays a factor in how you start. And maybe does that factor yeah. into like a fan fest? Hey, let's all celebrate. I mean, you know, they're only weeks removed from the passing of their owner. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a emotional time. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And they'll have a patch, clearly. And they'll absolutely have a patch all year. Still, There's no way they don't. I mean, I, I I didn't like, I'm not going to like bash him for it, but it'll be interesting to see what Manny says because we haven't heard from him about since Peter's passing. I know we haven't. Man, that first day of like media availability at spring training, there's going to be a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be interested to hear what he says. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Padres off season. That's basically it. I mean, it it's got funny. It. We, we got ripped the other day for being too depressing. No, um, for being too negative. Not or for being too negative, but it also uh, was on the side of major depressing. Go on. What are you talking about? Clarify. What 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 was it? Oh, it was when um you make oh, when the Eeyore caller called him. See manic. Right, which I didn't fully get. I still don't fully understand, but like we we're so down, boring and down that we make Eeyore seem like this upbeat, energetic person. Well, what do you want us to say? I mean, they had Juan Soto and Josh Hader and Blake Snell last year, and now they don't. Um, we haven't heard from anyone representing ownership. They've made no moves other than two people you've never heard of in your entire life. Nobody's ever heard of Yuki Matsui or Wusako. You never heard of Michael King until the Soto trade, to be honest. So... I mean, what are we supposed to say? It's the best. They lost their manager. I mean, hey, it's been amazing. I mean, you want us to lie or you want us to they be lost their owner. truthful? Right. But like, there's no real but here. I think they can win. I just need to see it, you know? 
I can't guarantee that they're going to win. I think a lot of people last year kind of guaranteed they fell out of bed in the postseason, and they didn't. So I'm not saying they're not, not talented. I think they are. I think Tatis is going to bounce back. I think Machado, Bogarts are all capable, right? But there's no guarantees here. They had a better team last year. Yep, a better team. They, they could play significantly better baseball. I mean, you don't have to have all superstars on your team to win. Mm -hmm. You just need to be a good team with two hitting with two outs. You need to be, you know, a team that wins one run games. And this team couldn't do it last year. I mean, they were the worst team when it came to runners in scoring position majority of the season. Hold on. They're, what? Darnay says Manny spoke about Peter at a charity event for what it's worth. Our producer, Darnay Tripp, who's been producing then Why didn't show. I see it? Yeah, then how come nobody has seen that? And now he says, don't quote me on that. I just did. Too bad. Too late. Too bad. Now... I'm going to like literally clip this up and be like, Darnay Tripp said. <laughs> um, I know he I mean, spoke that would, at an but event, that would but I didn't hear anything talking about. I mean, we consume Padres content like no one else. I mean, like it's Jim, air. Jim is like, has algorithms set up to like see that. And I'm glued I mean, to my what, phone. What on a problem. Earth, what on earth did he say? How could we have missed that? I mean, I see everything. And if we missed it, then nobody talked about it. Um. Yeah, and he may have, but I haven't seen it. And what charity event has there been? It was he did uh, the bicycle thing. Yeah, at a third, with third graders. Yeah, and there was no video of that. You would think that would have been really pretty. There was a video impactful. of him talking, but I don't remember him talking about Peter. Yeah, either do I. Not to say it didn't happen. I mean, our producer says it happened. <laughs> How mad is he? <laughs> he's like, I'm not coming off to you guys tomorrow. It, well, by the way, is that darn if you're if you're watching this live, is sports wrap? When was our last sports wrap? Like nine weeks ago? Like I didn't even realize it was still a thing until you texted us tonight. If I'm being honest. Um, okay, while we have a moment, I do want to remind our viewers about our partnership with Underdog Fantasy. This is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports. You can win. Big time, up to 20 times your money in a single night with Pick'ems. It's so easy, simple hires or lowers, football, Major League Baseball, NBA, et cetera, college sports as well. Get three right, six times your money, four, 10 times your money. You go five for five, you can win 20 times. You can insure it, which means you can get one wrong and still win big. Double your first deposit up to $100 by using promo code PODSWRAP. That is P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Again, double your first deposit by using promo code PODSWRAP. That is P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. And click the link in the description down below or go to underdogfancy.com or download the Underdog Fancy app. Best and easiest place to play fantasy sports. Couldn't be simpler. Couldn't be easier. Drafting. Pick'ems. Use promo code PODSWRAP. That's P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Darnay's doubled down. Wow. Yeah, he answered a question about him. Obviously, not to the extent he will at spring training. Wow. Well, I'm curious to hear him elaborate more. Right. No, I agree. I didn't realize he'd even comment. I didn't, I didn't realize either. Because I don't think he put anything on Instagram. No, he's just not put that, on his. I don't even follow him on Instagram, but. No. Only thing I've seen from Manny on Instagram lately is his underwear. Like, oh, right. does he have an, the underwear brand or whatever? Yeah, with like his designs or whatever. Yeah, would you agree with Iron Swan that says we need Fam back? Oh my God, if this team had Tommy Fam, it, uh, yeah, It'd sign me up right now <laughs> just for the for, just for the like talk. Well, that and I think he could absolutely help this team. Mm -hmm. In a second, would I sign up for Tommy Fam? In a second. Yeah, I agree with you, but he's coming off a really good year. And you know, exactly. I have a pretty strong feeling he's motivated by the contract. So he was a three he hitter. He was hitting third for the D backs in the World Series. World Series, yeah. And he, last he hit a year, home run in like what game one or two? He made six million last year. He made nine million with the Padres in twenty twenty one. So he's probably in that I don't know, you tell me, eight to twelve million dollar range. Potentially. I would guess. And again, that's not crazy money, but I think it might be outside the Padres spending potentially. Man, I can't wait to see what the next move is.
That's what I'm curious about. There's going to be multiple moves, but what is the next move? That's a good question, man. You know, the next move you think should be like outfield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have two on your 40, man, you probably (laughs) need more than that. Yeah. And then pitching. So like it is, it is odd. And to continue to go back to the Soto deal, I I get it. I understand people like shut the fuck up. Mm Mm-hmm. But it is odd that when they traded Juan Soto, which was in when? The end of this, or the middle of December? Yeah, after the winter meetings, right? After you put the put AJ's feet to the fire at the what was the press conference? Oh, Mike Schultz press conference? Mike Schultz, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's been about a month. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little more than that. That they traded away their two starting outfielders and haven't addressed that need since. In over a month. In over a month. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I also think that it was a little interesting that they could have turned back to like a Lugo or a Waka and didn't. You know, that kind of told you about the money issues they were up against to start the off season, and that they declined the Waka deal. Right. And he went and signed the exact same same from deal, the same deal as he got declined with. Which is right. wild, but maybe they thought they don't think that he can re- reproduce what he did, or replicate. Excuse me, what he did this past year. Well, there's all this Joey Gallo talk. I'm like, if I'm going to spend anything on Joey Gallo, I'd rather not. I mean, it just seems like throwing money at someone that has not produced in years, that just strikes out and will run into some balls, but has no real impact on a winning club, does he? Am I missing something? I mean, Joey Gallo's last three seasons, is he impacting you in any positive manner? Like, is the jury out? Like, oh, maybe he's going to find something. What's he going to find? I don't know, but doesn't he feel like a Padre because of? Because of AJ? AJ? Yeah, probably, but it seems to me like a waste of money, especially at Petco where it's, the numbers are never going to look so better. hit. They're only going to look worse, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, he is who he is. I mean, look at his numbers. He can't hit 200. Is that going to play well? Yeah, I see. Garrett Cooper's gone, right? Isn't Cooper gone? Yes, he's gone, but he hasn't signed anywhere yet. Oh, I thought he did sign somewhere. No, there there was just rumors. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Profar feels like a Padre, right? Yeah, Profar makes sense. Profar definitely makes sense. He makes sense only from a money standpoint. It doesn't make sense from a make you better team standpoint. Yariel Rodriguez signed with the Blue Jays, didn't he? Correct. Okay, so that's not the next move, and that's why Alec Manoa might be expendable, which isn't the worst thing in the world. In that, you know? correct. Correct. So that that actually makes sense. Um, Rich says sign Ryu, possible trade for Kepler, possible resign Profar, possible resign Cooper, possible. Yeah, one of those will happen. One of them? One of those will happen. Write it down. I mean, pro far, right? Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, one of those will happen. Definitely. Um, And then some JD Gatcher says, Gershom didn't hit 200. Yeah, we vilified him for it. Also, zero power. Mm -hmm. You know, at least Gallo can run into a ball. Or two. Or two. Um, Okay, guys. Let's do this again tomorrow at 3 p.m. On the radio, join us, San Diego Sports 760. You can be listening locally on the radio or on the free iHeartRadio app, no matter where you are. You could be in, where could you be? Seoul, South Korea right now. And you could listen to us on the free iHeartRadio app. In fact, we had a listener, Aztec Gary, listening to Aztec games from Vietnam last week on the free iHeartRadio app. So you can literally listen from anywhere um, in the world on this planet. Is this planet the world? Yeah. I'm an idiot, but you can't listen from another planet. Is my point. Uh, what? <laughs> anyway, join us tomorrow at three. We'll talk more Padres. Maybe there'll be a move. If not, we'll still talk some Padres. Um, please subscribe. We have year-round content for you. Subscribe, like button hit the subscribe us. button. Yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Unless you're getting a, a mid-roll ad right now from YouTube, <laughs> you can't see this. But if you're here. Please subscribe. Uh, smash the like button for us. Follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. If you're here on replay, thank you for the super thanks. We really do appreciate your support of the channel. 
Um, we will be back when there is Padres news. And again, you can join us on the radio. We're also on YouTube, by the way. John and Jim is on YouTube. Search for John and Jim 760. We're there every single weekday from 3 to 6 Pacific. Um, please support our partners, obviously, Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. Whatever your insurance need is, Mark can take care of you. He is our title sponsor. He can save you $750 or more just by switching your insurance. Aura, if you're looking to get healthier, a lot of you are. It's a new year, ORA.organic, or click the link in the description down below. And again, promo code PODSWRAP, P-A-D-S-W-R-I-P. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100 at Underdog Fantasy. You don't have to deposit $100. $10 or more, you'll get that doubling of your first deposit by using promo code P-A-D-S-W-R-A-P. All right, Jim. All right, John. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, peace out. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.